Almost every state in the United States has a shelter-in-place order to help limit the spread of coronavirus. But with six out of 10 cars still on the road, according to the Washington Post, are people taking this seriously? Are Tesla owners taking it seriously? Well, thanks to Tesla, we have some data here to look and see if Tesla owners are actually staying home and driving less. So let's free the data and see exactly how well the Tesla community is adhering to these orders. California was the first state in the United States to issue a shelter in place order, which means you only go out for essential needs or services, or if you work in one of those essential fields. Other states followed, and at this point, almost every single state in the United States has some sort of restrictions on going out and travel and parks and everything else that you would typically do without any kind of pandemic going on. This was in addition to other travel restrictions that were already in place, and with the TSA data, we can see that air travel was down quite a bit year over year. So let's take a deeper dive here and see exactly what's going on in the states that are most affected by this. As I mentioned, this data comes to us from Tesla, and this is a company I'm an advisor to. It's kind of like Fitbit for your Tesla, and what it does is it tracks all your trips, helps you monitor things like your efficiency on those trips, phantom drain, and also give you some other kind of cool fun stuff like becoming the mayor of a supercharger. Now, the data that I have access to is private because I'm a part of the company, and it is completely anonymized. So this isn't something that's out there for everyone to look at. This is just for us to look at here together. So deciding on a metric to start with is kind of important. And we could look at just a pure number of trips, how many trips are people taking, but then you have to think about the distance of those trips and also the growth of users on the platform. So you kind of have to normalize all that out. After digging in, the thing that I found to be the kind of most accurate way to describe whether or not people are staying at home is the daily distance travel. Because if you're not going to work, you're not going to school, you're not doing your typical activities, the number number of trips may still be kind of similar, two or three trips to the grocery store or something close, but that distance is going to be different. So that's what we're looking at here is the daily distance traveled per vehicle on the platform. So looking at what's going on in California, I want to just first see the average distance traveled prior to the declaration of a national emergency in the US, which was on March 13th. And right here, you can see it's somewhere between 45 and 50, we'll call it 47. And it's pretty steady. This trend from the beginning of the year until then was pretty solid. Then after the national emergency declaration, you can see that things took a pretty sharp nosedive. This little week right after was a huge drop in the average daily uh, distance traveled. And so, I mean, the trend alone of just that little bit is just straight down. Then on March 19th, the governor of California issued a stay at home order and the trend kind of continued to to go down, but did kind of level off. And so now you're looking anywhere between 30 to 35 miles per day traveled by a Tesla owner in California. Then if you want to see this full trend of the before and after from the beginning of the year till now, you can see just a huge shift right at those two points there. The next chart I wanted to look at was the daily distance traveled for week of year and look at it year over year. So you can see how 2019 people were driving compared to 2020. And this is rolling it up to the week level instead of at the daily level to kind of smooth out those peaks and valleys there. And we're doing week of year because the day of the year does shift kind of every year. So you can see again, right around week 11, when that national emergency was issued, just a tremendous decline in the average distance traveled in 2020. So this is actually really big. And so if you add up all those weeks and you look at year over year to date, Tesla owners in California are driving 31% less in 2020 than they did in 2019 using this data here. It's important to note also that this isn't every single Tesla in California. It is a fairly large sample, but it is a sample nonetheless. So the actual numbers will vary slightly from this here. Looking at another state hard hit by that, also on the West Coast, is the state of Washington. Looking at the average distance traveled by day, it actually is a bit less than what you see in California. And there is quite a bit more variability, more peaks and valleys here, but again, a pretty flat, although slightly declining trend up until that national emergency declaration. 
Then once that national emergency declaration hit, it dropped kind of immediately following the next day and then went back up kind of really high. And then their stay at home order was put in place on March 23rd. And that's where, again, you saw a bigger decline. However, though, overall, the drop here or the trend isn't as steep or as sharp as we saw in California. When you look at the year over year, you see a very similar trend to what there was for California. Here, the 2019 trend at this point in time was going up and the one for 2020 is going down again with a huge dip starting right around week 11, week 12. And then year over year comparison, it is down, but it's only down by just under 11%, 10.78% from 2019 to 2020. So it is down, the trend is there, people are staying at home, but perhaps the distances they typically travel are less than what you travel in California. So you know that's where you see kind of the variation there. Now let's have a look at the state hardest hit by this, New York. So in New York, leading up to the national emergency, it was actually on the rise. Trips were increasing in their average distance per day. Then again, as that national emergency declaration was issued, we saw a pretty sharp decline. Their stay at home order was on March 20th and immediately there was a big spike and it's actually kind of been up and down ever since. So the stay at home order in New York didn't seem to have as much of an effect as the national emergency declaration did. So year to date, the average distance traveled per day for Tesla owners is on the decline for New York. However, not a tremendous amount. It's kind of flat, but it is declining. And when you look year over year, you see kind of both things here. You see that prior to the emergency declaration, right around a week 11, 2020 was up quite a bit and it has dropped and it is lower than it was last year. But still, it wasn't as dramatic of a change as we'd seen in other states. So overall for New York, what we see is actually an increase year to date on driving in 2020 versus 2019. However, most of that came prior to the emergency declaration and prior to the stay at home order. So it's not fair to kind of just lump it all together like this because the trend as we looked at is on the decline and it appears folks in New York are taking it seriously as they are the most hard hit by this. And so if you put all the three states on the chart here, you can see California has seen the biggest decline, New York again seeing an overall increase so far, and Washington a slight decline, I would call it. So this is all fine for Tesla owners, but we need to baseline it against something. So what if we could figure out what non-Tesla owners are doing, what kind of the average driver out there is doing? Well, thankfully, WeHo is here to help. WeHo published this really cool map here showing what's going on with people's traveling. And they're doing it for basically all types of drivers, not just folks that are Tesla owners, like the data we were just looking at. Here you can see various cities with kind of overall changes. New York City is a drop of 52%, Los Angeles a drop of 45%, and overall a drop of 38.2%. Now something we haven't looked at yet, which also should be affected by this, is supercharger usage. Supercharger usage in the United States has been on the decline kind of since mid-February. And this data comes to us again from Teslab. And the way it works is we're looking for that busy ratio. So if you have the Tesla app, you know when you open it up, it'll tell you how many stalls are available. We're essentially looking at that data to see how busy are some of these stations. Now, there's some variability in there, but overall we should be able to discern a trend because we're pulling it pretty frequently. We have a ton of data on this. So overall, yeah, it looks like the decline is happening, a pretty sharp decline after the national emergency declaration. This is overall for the United States. And if we look at a map of the US and see before the national emergency declaration what it looked like for usage, you can see the bigger, brighter red dots here are the ones that are more busy. And then if we show the after effect, you can see the transition from that to a much more dimly lit and much smaller view of the supercharger usage in the United States. Then if you put them side by side, you can see just how dramatic of a shift it's been. And this makes sense. A lot of superchargers in the United States are for long distance travel. And without people going on these big, long road trips, you're going to see that drop. Now, some of it is also for kind of more just residential use. Los Angeles, for example, has tons of superchargers. 
when really a lot of that is just people that live in the area. But if you're not driving, then you don't need to go charge it, even if you don't have a place to charge at home. The car just sits there. And here's where we see a massive drop in actual usage. So the before and after of supercharger usage is about 47% down, meaning that people are charging at superchargers 40% less than they were prior to the national emergency declaration in the United States. I don't wanna leave our Canadian friends out. So here again, you can see the supercharger usage in Canada since the beginning of the year. It's been on a very sharp decline ever since. Of course, we're looking at Canadian winters during that time. So superchargers and all that, people probably aren't taking as many road trips as my guess. With the before and after maps, you can see again, a dramatic shift of how busy they were prior to the shutdown until now. And Canada officially doesn't have a, a nationwide shutdown. All the provinces kind of did it on their own. And it appears that it was basically right around the same time as the United States. So I'm still using March 13th as that date for before and after. And then lastly, if you look at overall usage is down 56.23% from before the shutdown until now. So Canada is definitely staying home. They're definitely not going on these road trips and they are adhering to all the kind of shelter in place orders. Now we didn't talk about any potential benefits that actually may come from reduced pollution by people driving less. Thankfully, that's exactly what I talked about in last week's video over here. So if you want, go have a look, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here in the next one.